recording. Today we are going to talk about the next module that is about the C data structure that will be used for uh, creating the records, right? We can, the examples of the records are uh, employees record or student record, right? And today the objective of this study will be that um, the student can create and use uh, structure this in general and union, this is a kind of data structure. And the last one is how can we uh, create and use the enumerations. This is uh, a set of constant that is divided in terms of a set of meaningful uh, constants, right? That can be written in the terms that the human being like us can understand. And the next one is we have to know how to pass the structure to function, okay? Uh, both by value or by differences. Okay, and the last one is we have to define new data type that we call a user defined type, right? That will be the type of the structure that you can use the keyword type define. Okay, type define like this. Type defined to create alias for existing type names, right? Okay, it will be useful for the um, expert user. So today we will I will introduce you about the structure and how to define it, and then you have to know how to initialize the data structure and then how to access the structure members, right? We have done that for in the record, right? we have many fields, right? That will describe uh, the structure. So we have to know how to access them, right? And we can use structure in order to pass into the function as an argument, both, in, uh, both by value or by references. And the next one is another kind of structure that we call uh, union, right? In some special case, maybe you will want to have the, what we call the flexible fields in the data structure. You can use union for this case in order to maybe, sometimes you want to use integer in this field. Sometimes you want to use um, floating point in this field. So you can use unions in order to discriminate between two different types that you will use in the same place. And the last one, if you want to define uh, a set of something, right? That is a, a name, the names that will be a better understanding, right? For example, if you want to define a traffic light, how many, how many colors for traffic light? Red, green, and yellow, right? Instead of Instead of define it in terms of the one, two, or three, we can define it in terms of the enumeration of the set of red, green, and yellow, like this example. So in order to access to this kinds of set, you can just simply use the name red, yellow, and green. Okay. Another example is the, the day in a week. For example, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Uh, normally, if you want to um, to use this kind of uh, constant, you have to define it in terms of the define, and they are not related. But in terms of the enumeration, they can be like it name, right? Enumerate, numerate mean number, right? To make it to be a number. So it means that we are going to define Monday to be, let's say one, right? Monday to be one, Tuesday to be two, Wednesday to be three, right? That would be useful for if you want to, maybe if I want to ask you, what is the day after today? For example, today is Tuesday. The day after today, maybe you can use plus plus, right? In order to increment the number, uh, the, the, the day, right? You can use Tuesday plus plus, it's going to be Wednesday. Like this, right? This um, makes sense and understandable. Okay, this is what we have to study in today. 
Okay, that's not difficult. So first of all, I would like to introduce you about the structure. What does it mean? And what actually you, you know about this? The structure is, um, you can call a structure like um, a record. Record. You have a record of what? Uh, sometimes we can refer to the structure as the aggregation, right? These are the collections of related variables under one name. What does this mean? Um, suppose you want to define um, a student record or student structure. What are the variables for this student record. Students will contain student ID, right? For example, 64 blah, 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 T4, 0, 1. This is the ID of the student in KMUTT, right? especially for the CPE student. And we have to know about the name and family name Anything else? Department name and so on. This is an example of how to define a structure of the structure of a student, right? We can have a collection of related variable, for example, name and family name are related, right? And also the student ID is related to uh, the department name, right? We can identify, right, from your ID, right? And uh, we, we can know that what, what, the, what is your department, okay? Structure may contain uh, variables of many different data types, okay? Maybe integer, character, string, anything, right? And, it is different to array. What does it mean array? Array is a aggregation, is a set contain only elements of the same data type, but for the structure, it will contain the various related variable under one name, okay? So as I just told you, right, structure are commonly used to define records to be stored in files. Right. That's why I asked you to uh, collect your collect your um, your course and um, your credit and your grade from the high school, right? That we are going to um, to play with this data, right? If you want to um, to maybe read, read your data from your files and then try to print it out on the screen, and then maybe we have to calculate a bit about your GPA. Um, anything, right, we can use from your data. So first of all, you must have the record, right, or the structure that you have to, to be used, right? Okay, um, maybe someone asked me about why do we have to, uh, to prepare for the data? So first of all, I would like you um, to give the first, the, the, the problem, right? The, this, the problem today is suppose we have uh, a files that containing, uh, that contains your uh, your grade records, right? Many um, for three years, right? In high school, and then how can we manage that in terms of the digital format, right? Normally, you may um, someone asks me, I don't have the .c sv files, right? But oh, if you don't have, you have to create it, right? Because you are a computer engineering student. Right, you have to uh, convert it and then keep it, right? Because it is your data, your information. Now maybe you um, you may not, um, you may think it is not useful, but I think in the future you will, uh, okay, you can use it, right? Okay, even you cannot use it, but at least you can use it to, to, to be useful in your C programming course now. Okay, the next one is the structure definition, right? If you want to use the structure, see structure, you have to know how to define it. 
structures are derived data type, but they are constructed using objects of other types. Right? So if you want to define a playing card like this, right, you can use, you can start with the struct. Struct is an abbreviation of structure, right? You can just simply use struct in order to define our structure. And then you have to name what we are going to, um, um, to use, right? In this example, we are going to define a playing card, right? So I define a new variables. Actually, it's not a variable, it's the name, the new name. That is the structure name. So we call struct card. And then we can use uh, left basis and right basis at, at, right, in order to scope the set of elements or the set of related variables right for this for this structure and then don't forget to put semicolon every time right otherwise you will get a, a compilation error and then in this structure card right we have to uh, fields right uh, when we, we call this as the fields what does it mean by field? Field is uh, the name or the objects that uh, we are going to, or the elements that will be defined inside the structure. From this structure, there are two fields, right? The name, the first one is the face and the second one is the suit, right? Suppose you want to define the playing card, right? Three hearts, right? The face is three and the suit is heart, okay? Or queen diamond, right? So you have to define it in terms of the, the string, right? You can define it like this, like, what does it mean by this? This is an array of characters, array of characters, Array of characters. What does it mean? Array of characters. String, yes, thank you, Lamin. It is a string. No, actually, it's a string, right? If you want to define a string inside the structure, you have to use character and stars. Ah, okay. So now you know how to declare um, a, a string inside the structure definition. Okay. Anything else? If you want to can we use that? Okay, Goth, thank you very much for your comments. But I'm going to talk about this. If you want to specify the number of characters for face and for suit, right? You can specify it like this. Character, face, and then 20. And also character, suit, and then 20 as well. So when I define like this, my question is, how many characters for, for this face? How many characters for the string face? What is the maximum number, possible maximum number of characters in face? Who can answer this question? How many num maximum number of characters in this field, face and suit? The answer is 19. The maximum number of character that can be used in this 
I'm talking about uh, the 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 possible characters in this uh, in this field, right? Because we have to reserve the last character. What is the last character? The ending character, an offspring character that is backslash zero, backslash zero. This is uh, an offspring, right? You have to reserve because this one you have to allocate 20 characters for face. So you can have the maximum number of the characters to be used in this field will be 19. You have to reserve the last one for the ending string, okay? And off string, okay? And the definition of the structure card containing members to members, so face and suit, right? Is is of them we have the data type character array of character. So array of character is a string. Okay, that's all for this slide. Any question? Okay, if you have no more question, I will have to uh, introduce you an, uh, an, another example of the structure for employee, right? If you want to define employee, right, in the real world application, maybe you have to uh, write an application for controlling the, the salary for a company, or you have to manage the HR human resources development in a company, the most important part or the most important data structure that you have to use is employee. So first of all, you have to define employee, right? So it's very easy, right? If you want to define a record employee, you can use simply use structure, struct employee. And struct employee will be used later, right? If you want to define Tom, if you want to define variable term to be a structure of employee, you can just simply use structure employee and then term chain like this. But right? this is the way to, uh, to make use of this data structure. And how many fields in this data structure? There are one, two, three, four, five. There are five fields for this data structure. And we have, um, Two string to uh to store uh first name and the last name of the employee, and then we can use unsigned integer to define his or her age, right? It cannot be negative. And character M or F, male or female, in order to define their gender. And the last one is the we have to correct the hourly salary, right? That could be the double of real number, right? This is, this is very easy, right? Very simple for defining the data structure, the, the structure for employee. And this part today, class is very important because if you link to the next course that we are going to, to, to study in the next semester that is a, uh, Programming with data structure, right? That is the the next course that um that is continuing from this course, uh, CPE one hundred. Okay, and don't forget to put semicolon here. Okay. And there is a question: Is it possible that we have the structure? and define the nested structure because we have the nested loop, right? We have the, an object inside an object. So is it possible to have the self-referential structure? What does it mean by self-referential structure? It means that the structure containing a member that is a pointer to the same structure type. Sorry, we cannot define this. Like, we have the we define structure employee two, right? And we cannot define directly uh, employee two inside employee two. Okay, in C programming, you cannot define object inside the object. 
Instead, you have to define as the pointer. You can use structure employee too, but you have to use this one. Do you remember star sign? Star sign means the pointer. This is a pointer to employee. Actually, pointer, pointer is what? Pointer is an address to an object. My object can be the structure as well, right? So this is uh, this employee two. This is just simply an extension of the employee one in employee in the previous slide, right? But we, okay, this one is not collected. We will cause an error, but you can simply define structure employee and pointer, e pointer. That is an employee pointer. In order to point to the address of another object or even for the, uh, the same object. Okay, so if I ask you whether, if we can define a self-referential structure in an employee or in a structure, the answer is yes, right? But we have to define it in terms of the pointer, right? You, but you cannot define structure inside a structure. Okay, you have to design a pointer to that structure inside the point inside the structure. Okay, I've just talked about the class data structure for the next term. So I want to um, maybe to give you an introduction a bit about the course, right? Um, data structure, you will have to talk about uh, the link list. What does it mean by link list? Link list means the um, we can connect the data instead of using the array. If you want to connect data in sequence of the data, you can use link list. And this one, the pointer here can be uh, useful for the link list to link from one to another record. For example, if I want to um, define the first student, ID 01, and I want to, to know the next student, ID 02, 3402, for example. So I can use this one. This is the link list, link to the next structure. Okay, this may be going to detail about the structure and a bit more um, difficult, right? I just want to maybe to, to uh, for someone who are familiar with the C programming, right? This one, the self-referential structure will be used in the link list. I would say that or in three, we will have to know link this in the future and then tree and also graph, right? Have you studied about tree and graph in discrete map course? Have Ajahn Narumon taught you about tree and graph? Okay, silent. <laughs> Maybe I assume that not yet. Okay, not yet. So um, you may have to finish this, um, the concept of tree and graph in this kit map. And then next term, we have to know how to implement the tree and the tree and graph in uh, programming with data structure. Okay, so uh, this term, you can just know about uh, the concept of them. Okay. So up to this, do you have any question about self-referential structure? It's so easy, right? And today you are going to define your structure. Structure, structure of what? If you want to calculate for, for, for your GPA, right? So what kinds of the record that you are going to create? What is the use of self-referential structure? Because um, I've just told you that if you want to implement link list tree or graph, we will have to use reference self-referential structure. It will uh, connect one or more data, two or more data together. Like in this example, um,
Okay, like in this example, suppose we have this employee, right? For each employee, they will have their manager, manager, like Tom. Tom is a manager of Jane, right? So inside the record, Jane, right? Jane, Jane has first name, family name, anything, but here, there must be Tom to be her manager. But as I just told you that we cannot put an object inside the object or the, a structure inside a structure. For this example, instead of using Tom here, right? You will have another structure that we call Tom. And then the manager of Jane will, uh, will put an address of Tom. That would be the pointer. So this is an example. Okay, I hope this answer your question. Thank you for your question. Okay, so, so now we have known about how to uh, define a structure, right? A structure name, right? For this example, structure stack card is a structure of playing card. And if you want to define a variable, so you can just simply use, for me, right? I will think about this as a, a type, a new type. We call user divided data type. A new data type, right? I can use this structure card like this, right? These two words will be, this one is um, keyword, right? And this one is user defined name, right? Name card. And a card is a, is a, is a variable of type structure card. An array, array of deck, array of deck, 52 decks, right? This is a play, the number of the playing cards, right? So the, we, this will declare the deck, declare deck to be an array of fifth, 52 elements of type structure card, of type structure card. And the last one is a pointer. Now it's a pointer because you can see the star here. This one will declare card pointer to be a pointer to this structure card. This structure card. Okay. Okay, I think it's um, it's okay. So um, we can also define structure card before this, and then you can use this line of the variable declaration, and then, or we can combine into this one. Do you understand what I mean? We can define structure card before. Okay, we can just define such a card like this before, and then when you want to um to define uh, the new variables, you can define like this, or you can define such a card like this, and then following by a card, deck fifty two, and then pointer card, the card pointer, so they are the same. This is also can be used like this. Okay, we can combine the, the, the structure with the variable declaration. We can put them all together. Okay, this is the two ways to define the variables of data type or structure type. 
So now you may have the question that how many operations that can be performed on the structure? If you define a few data structures and then uh, how can we perform or how many operations can be performed on this structure? The first one is assigning structure. Uh, we can use the assignment statement or you can use the address, you can use the pointer, you can use the address of the structure right, as a pointer to that reference data type, data structure. And another one is you can access to the member of the structure variable. And the last one is you can use a size of operator in order to determine the, the, the size of the structure. Okay, this is the red one, the red um, statements that you may have to be cautious that the structures may not be compared with using operator equal equal sign or not equal sign. Because if you use this, it's going to compare between the address of the structure. Then I'm going to talk about this into detail about when, when I show you the programs, okay? And this one is what we have to, to know. But in order to make it sure that you will understand about this operation, I will go, I, I, I would like to show you the example. This is the example of the assigning structure variables. Okay, so you can see here, this is the structure card, right? You define structure card, right? And don't forget to put semicolon here. And then in the main program, right? You define structure card, structure card, this one is a new structure, right? And there are two new structure, X1 and X2. I'm not going to suggest you to declare the variables like this, X1 and X2, but um, okay, sorry for that. I, I, I have no idea about how to think about the name, right? When I give this example. And then if I want to assign, right? Variables. I want to um to let x two is two is is a is a playing card three hearts three hearts playing card. So I divide my x two equal to three. This is a, a string, and heart is also a string. This one is face. This one is suit. Okay, when I define this, so X2 can be initialized. Okay, X2 is initialized. And then assigning structure variables to structure variable, another structure variable. Okay, this one. This is the meaning of assigning structure variable. You can assign X2 to X1. Okay, when I want to know that what is inside X1 and X2, so I try to print the value face and the value suit for X1. So I can simply use X1 dot face and X1 dot suit. So three hearts will be printed out. And X2 dot face and X2 dot suit three hearts also print out. So you can assign X1 to X2 by using X1 equal to X2 semicolon. It can be noticed here that just the value of X1 dot face will be equal to X2 dot face and x2 or uh, x1 dot suit will be equal to x2 dot suit. The, the fields or the value inside the, the structure will be copied and then can be compared. But you cannot use this one if x if x1 equal equal to x2. Why? Okay, you can write it. But what does it mean by this?
What does it mean by this exam or this expression? The value of x is equal to x2. Um, what is the value of x1? What are you trying to answer? ASCII value? No, no, it's not ASCII value. Value of what? What are we going to compare? If I use if x1 equal equal x2, what are we going to compare? Thank you, Lamin. Address. Okay. This means that we are going to compare between x1, the address of x1, and address of x2. Is it true or false from this from this example? Everyone in this classroom, do you know why I, I, the answer is the address of X1 and X2? Mm. It's strange. How can we know? <laughs> How can we know? Uh, I have just uh, realized that uh, it's very strange, it's very weird. Right, when we use this one, x1 is equal to x2. Because instead of this, right, if you want to specify more uh, or clearly about this expression, you have to use ampersand x1 equal equal to ampersand x2, right? But when we use x1 and x2, oh, that's why Goff answered me that it is the value of x1. But remember, x1 is a structure of card. Right, there are two fields, right, tree and heart. What value will be compared? You don't know, right? We, because we have, there are various type of this. Okay, let me go to another one, uh, the next slide. So you maybe you are, you will be clear about what I'm talking about. So the next one is, even I want to check the address of the structure, okay, the same the same example, but right, we assign x1 is equal to x2. But now we want to know the value of x1 and x2. But this one, I, I, I just printed out the, 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 address, the address, right, MSN, right? And I get the address. So you can see that this is the address of x1 and this is the address of x2. So they are different. They are different. Why? Because in the decoration part here, decoration, decoration part here, x1 is another exam, another variable, uh, x2 is another variable. Even we use this one, x is assigned by x2. So the value of the fields or fields in x2 will be copied to x1. Just that. But this is important. But the address or the place that we keep x1 and x2 are different, are different, are different location. Okay, this is what we call uh, the, the part that taking the address of structure variable. Okay, I can use the same the same example to uh, to show you how to access the member of structure. If you want to access the face of x1, you can use x1 point, x1 dot face. You can get three. If you use x1 dot suit, you will get hearts. Okay, this is a very easy. 
okay? This is how to access the member or the field of the structure. And the next topic that I'm going to tell you is that, but we have already passed this. This is a how to initialize the structure. You can initialize X2, which is the structure card, right? By using um, like a set, right? And this one is the first field, second field, right? Because in structure card, we have two strings to be defined, right? So you have to, you can just, use this in order to allocate this. Or you can use x1 dot first. Ah, if you want to copy string to x1 dot first, how can we do? First of all, you have to in, uh, include something dot h. str ing dot h starting compare is a uh, compare to string but if you want to copy string you have to use this one string strcpy thank you very much both uh -huh. strcpy <laughs> got you tap so fast right <laughs> you miss typing i know okay you have to use string copy cpy and copy from what to where to where x1 dot face right and three you have to write like this this means to copy three setting three to x1 dot face and if you want to assign suit x1 dot suit right you can use heart like this this means that to copy heart into suit. You cannot use this one. This one is to copy one structure to another structure. Okay, don't forget to include setting dot h, right? If you want to compare string, you can use string compare, strcmp, strcmp. And if you want to get the location of string, right? Maybe you can use string, string, right? For example, today, right? Maybe you have to locate to compare your string, right? Because you have some uh, some schools, you have like um, suppose it is a Mac, right? You can use M A one O zero. So you may have to use something something in order to locate to check whether M A one O one is Right, to check whether this uh, code is a uh, map cost or not, right? You can, you have to use certain, certain, right? If it return any integer, right, except zero, so maybe it is, uh, you can locate for the MA or the map cost, but if not, it will return zero, right? So it means that this cost is not map. So this is what I'm going to ask you to, um, to locate for the GPA for your, for all of your math courses. What is the GPA? What is the GPA for you all, for your science courses? 
Okay, you may have to use the string compare or string, string, right? Okay, that must be fun. And okay, this is how to initialize and how to access to the member of the structure. Okay, this is the, the example. Um, previously, I, I tell you that how to access to the member of the structure, you can use dot, right? Like x1 dot face or x1 dot suit. But if you have, okay, this one is a structure, normal structure, right? So structure card, a card. And if you want to use a pointer to the card, you can use structure card and then this one, star card pointer. Okay, how can we, or make use of the pointer. So for this example, you can just assign a card dot face is equal to s. Pay something to a card. We can also use this. I'm not sure, but um, it's better to use the string copy. Okay, but in this example is assigned by using the string, I'm not sure about this. Maybe it's just uh, to define the constant to a card face dot face and a card dot suit. And then we use this one, card pointer, when we declare this is a structure card, a card, right? And then um, card pointer, is a pointer to this structure, right? So this one, card pointer is equal to address, right? That means that we have to point to the address here of the structure A card. And then if you want to get the member of this structure, the first thing that you have to, uh, you can do is to use A card dot face and A card dot suit. This is the one. One way that you can use. Next one, if you want to use pointer, card, pointer, instead of using dot, right? You use, you can use minus and then greater than sign and then face. Like a pointer, like a link list, like, like a pointer, right? You can use card, PGR, and suit, right? For the pointer, pointer you can use, this is like an arrow, arrow sign, right? When you use pointer, you can use arrow sign. When you use structure, you can use dot sign. But if you want to combine the pointer and also dot sign, you can use this one. Change card pointer, which is an address into a value, a value by star. Put star sign in front of you can get the value of the pointer. We call D referencing. If you could remember, D referencing. Please remember this word. D referencing. D referencing. You get the value. Change pointer to value. Pointer to value. So. When you get value, but this one is a value that is structure, right? So you can use dot face and dot suit. Okay. This slide is the most difficult part of today's class. If you could understand this, it's very good. Someone may maybe say to yourself, is this difficult? <laughs> is this already difficult? Yes, this is the most difficult things, topics today for today. Right? You may have to understand how to use dot, how to use this and how to use star dot, dot suit, dot 
sort and this sort. When you use dot, you use dot with a structure. You use this arrow sign, you can use with the pointer. You use this one to change from pointer to value or to structure, and then you can use dot to reference for the member of the structure. Okay, someone may say that it is so easy. Okay, I will go to the next slide. Okay, maybe before we will go to the, the next slide and continue with this, maybe we have um, a short break for 10 minutes and then we'll come back again, okay? <laughs> 